especially during these times right now. The world is so crazy and everyone is panicking and they want to be with their loved ones and probably lots of fear. You know, what are you doing to keep calm and just be in the moment right now where the world has, where the world is at today? The first thing is gratitude that I'm alive, that I don't have the contagion virus right now, but most of I am grateful that I have another opportunity to live life. And you notice when we come out of addiction, you know, one of the most scary thing for us is, uh, well, authorities and to be in prisons, to be locked up for freedom. And when we are someplace like our home and we want to run away, people don't understand we're home. We can be someplace more that we want to, we, can, we cannot escape, you know, that we don't want to be in, we're home. So in our home, there's something that very, is something beautiful that we, that we make it, we can make our home sacred. We don't have to run away from our home because our home is our temple. It's the first foundation of a reflection where we can see the divine and the divine is in ourselves. So one of the beautiful things about this time is that if you can see how the virus is spreading, and I've been talking to my apprentices about this, people cannot see the addiction of suffering, how it spreads because it doesn't affect the, the body like it does this virus that it kills it, but it kills the inspiration. It kills the motivation that it makes us suppress ourselves, that make us think that we're not good enough, that we're less than. So if we can see with this virus crossing all over the world that we have to have six feet distance from one another, could you just imagine if we work with ourselves, we don't have to find uh, protection to somebody who talks negativity because it might affect us because we have the antidote and the antidote is to not believe in lies. And we can see that this world has addiction of suffering right now. But now with the coronavirus, we can explain the teachings of the tradition way easier because we can see the sickness in our face. And the other thing is the responsibility that we have to protect our body and to be in agreement like we are right now in the world that we have to cover, we have to stay at home so this virus doesn't spread anymore. But could you imagine the virus that we have of suppressing ourselves? that we find the antidote in our own home, that the day when everything comes back to a new normal, because it's gonna be a new normal, it's never like it was yesterday. They talk about when life was before the internet. Now we're gonna talk life before we went in group gatherings and things because now we're protecting because it's awareness that comes. Before we were not aware, but now we are aware there is a disease, a virus, but also we are aware that there is something that takes our inspiration. So we have two options to be the victim or to be the warrior. And the warrior is the one that confronts anything with love and gratitude. The victim is confronts everything with complaining. You hear that, brother? People don't want to do things because they start complaining. And the complaining is the addiction that's paralyzed anything from doing. But the moment that you make a decision, say, okay, I'm going to enjoy. So right now I'm writing new books. I'm writing new music. I'm doing a lot of interviews and I'm redoing my home. And I always have the flexibility, the life changes like, before everything began, brother, I was ready. I was going to sell my home. I was going to be a gypsy. But really? that changed, you know? I couldn't be a gypsy because you have to be isolation in your home. Okay. So I had to detach from that way I was going to do. Say, okay. And that's the beautiful thing about flexibility. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm accepting life how it's going to be, but I'm just doing the fourth agreement. And the fourth agreement in the four agreements is always do your best. I love it. You know, why do you think people are addicted to suffering? Because <clears throat> they're trying to survive, brother. Mm. There's a dogma from a long time ago that corrupted spirituality. That if you're only good enough if you give your 10% of, of money that you earn, if you sacrifice, if you marry the person you don't want to marry as, a, as an arranged marriage. There's so many uh, superstitions, dogmas out there that kills the soul artistic, artistically that we begin numbing. Even when the joke, when you're in love and you're getting married and other opinions come in, imposing their own poison of their relationship, and they say, let's see how long the honeymoon would last. Even doing that, you know, there's addiction of suffering in any direction from eating. And I tell you, people judge, and that's one of the biggest addictions, judging. And I tell you, I was not vegan before and people judge me for not being vegan. And now that I'm vegan, people judge me for being vegan. You cannot escape judgment. But when you don't judge yourself, no one else can judge you. And